Hello again, well, it's Andy back again, and we're playing about with our Volvo 480 ES. Now, if you remember, in the last video, we were trying to work out why we couldn't get the car to start. So, we've checked out the spark, and we're not getting a spark, but it looks like the ignition coil is okay. So, that then leads us on to the ECU. So, let's work out how to diagnose that. We'll get a bit further into it, and I'll show you how to take the ECU out, how to check it, and we'll see if we can figure out why it's going to start. Fingers crossed. First thing before we go anywhere near the ECU of the electronic systems is to take the battery off. Now, I'm taking the battery off most of the time at the moment anyway because it's got a little bit of a drain. I don't want to kill my battery. Better put this one back on charge as well. With all the turning over and the trying to start, I've been killing batteries off. Uh, that's to be expected. So now that that's off, I'll show you where the ECU is in the car. By the way, unfortunately, we've still got the poor audio. Need to replace the camera soon, so I'll be doing that shortly, improving the quality on the, uh, on the video audio. So, apologies for that. So, let's get inside. Right, now, believe it or not, inside this old 1994 car, there are two computer modules. There is one which is classed effectively like the body control module in newer cars which in this one it drives things like the indicators the electric seats because we've got electric seats uh, electric mirrors various gadgets electric windows indicators things like that so that's the body control module and in this one being a right hand drive car that module is under the passenger side if we look here that's the uh, bonnet pull lever and if I can just tilt you up you can just see that's the body control module now I've had that out just to make sure there's no damage to it anything like that that looks in pretty good condition however this bit of carpet here a little bit of water damage to it it felt a little bit damp so there might be a problem here but I don't think that's related to our overall problem that could be more a grounding issue something like that so we'll worry about that another time I think so what we want to do is get the ECU which controls the spark which controls the injectors all of the timing and takes all of the sensors and collects them together now that on this car is in the driver's footwell and you'll probably spot it I've already taken it out so there we have the fuse box I'm trying to locate it on a similar car and just tucked up in this corner of the bulkhead that's the ECU so in this case it's a Siemens and the engine code on this car is a B20F and the code on the ECU shows that so we'll uh, we'll get in there and we'll take it out slightly strange angle for the camera but it's the only way I could get it to fit so on this metal box and it's got a large multi-way connector lift the plastic clip a little bit of jiggling on the connector and we don't want to be too brutal with this there we go and you can see the large multi-way connector and the connection into the ECU so we've now got our ECU what we can do is first of all look at the pins and I can't see any corrosion or potential damage on the pins what we're looking for slight greening on the pins which normally means water damage again on the cable itself on the, the connector I should say that looks okay as well as does the loom now I have looked underneath here because under here are the relays that click away that uh, that was the source of the problem 
and uh, under here looks remarkably dry and all sealed up so I don't think we've had a problem with water getting in at least under here so now the ECU is out what I'm going to do is reconnect the battery and we'll see if the relays make the clicking and clacking noise now my suspicion is they won't because now the ECU is disconnected I think if that's the source of the problem then it will stop the clicking and clacking so it's not perfect science but uh, it's the best plan I've got so far let's go and the battery up it's a bit windier today so it might be harder for you to hear me nothing no clicks at all but there's a good chance if I put the key in the ignition we may not even get ignition with the ECU out let's see what uh, what we get right okay so the, the big difference I can see doing that ABS goes through self test Lambda light doesn't come on at all, so Lambda must be via the ECU, and the ABS light goes out after a few seconds. Now that suggests to me that the ABS is a separate system. Now I, I'm going to uh, I'm going to jump ahead here. I know it's a separate system, and I know it's not related, so it's not ABS. So we're still pointing at something to do with the ECU. So I think the next thing is let's take a look inside the metal box. Let's see what the ECU on a 1994 Volvo 480 ES looks like, shall we? Let's get inside this ECU. Little uh, star screws open it up. Now unfortunately this is one of the problems I've got. I don't have very much spare space to do this, so we're doing this sat on the seats inside the Volvo. So. Let's see what we can find inside the ECU. Now I'm not expecting this to be particularly sophisticated because we are talking about quite old technology. But this handles all of the timing. So it handles timing the spark, controlling the fuel injection and air mixture. So it also handles uh, things like all of the sensors as well so relatively complex let's take a look inside then let's make sure you can see what I'm doing okay all right so first thing is it's got this green sort of it's almost like an epoxy but it's a waterproofing solution I would guess now something quite useful I just noticed all of the pins are numbered on the connector on the bottom of the circuit board there so that might be useful later on so now the trick is to start looking on the board for any problems so we've got the various transistor outputs the main chips capacitors haven't haven't bulged that's that's quite a common one to check on on things like this so they look okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a closer look at this, um, maybe take the board out, take a really good look at it, and I'll let you know what I can find. So looking over the board, just doing a quick overview of it, and I have spotted what looks like it may be a problem. So it was difficult to get the camera to focus on this, so I've taken a few photos of it, and you'll see the parts that I've outlined here. And what it is, that circuit trace looks burnt. It actually looks like it's physically melted and come off the motherboard. Now what that tends to suggest is that it had high voltage or high current or some other power event come through it. Possibly a battery on backwards, uh, possibly a connector shorted out, that kind of thing. But this certainly tells us that our ECU is toast. It's been fried. So it 
I, uh, I'm not sure whether we're going to be able to salvage this ECU. My gut instant instinct is that we're not going to be able to, because even by jumpering across those wires, we could solder a wire across. I think the rest of the CPU will have been irreversibly damaged. If we take a look at the wiring diagram, uh, which we've got for the ECU, this is the B20F ECU, and uh, look at the bit that I've highlighted, pin 19 and 20. Now, pin 19 is the one that had the damaged trace, so the, the burnt trace. Following that through, that is the ignition signal from the car. It gets positive 12 volts when the ignition is on. So it would explain the, the ECU having so many problems because it is the primary signal wire. So that's where we're having our problems. Now, I've had a bit of a look on eBay, looking all over, trying to find a replacement ECU. These aren't easy to source. Very old component. New or refactored ones also very difficult you can't get new um, but luckily I have sourced a supplier now they're over in Latvia and they're going to send it over to me so fingers crossed in about a week or so's time it should arrive from Latvia and we can test it out so that's going to be coming very shortly in the meantime next video I'm going to be testing all of the sensors you can see on those pins because the last thing I want to do is connect a brand new ECU up and damage that one as well. So that's going to be coming up in the next video. Don't forget, please do subscribe and hit the subscribe button below and the like if you've enjoyed this video. We'll have the next video where we're diagnosing all of the sensors that connect into the ECU and then hopefully that ECU will arrive and you never know. We might get some progress on this, but other than that, thanks for watching.